hit subscribe to the DIY writer to support your hardworking authors and also lessen your chances of ending up as a victim in their next book. The world's largest UFO conference, Contact in the Desert, announces the launch of their eighth annual and very first virtual event. This event is focusing on UFOs in the year of science, also consciousness in the future. This will be held June 24th through 28th, 2021. Contact in the Desert is renowned for its top lineup of experts in the fields of ufology, forbidden archaeology, government disclosure, alien phenomenon, crop circles, and much more. Contact in the Desert already is the largest UFO conference in history and will now be the largest UFO conference in the virtual world. With over 60 lectures, 40 workshops, 11 panels, featured speakers presentations, virtual tours to Giant Rock, and other interactive events. Go to contactinthedesert.com for more information and get your tickets now. Hey, this is Jeff Bacon with DIY Writer Podcast. Today, we have Sidney Williams. He's a dark fiction horror writer, and he's got a ton of books that we're going to uh, take a look at, or he's, he's published a ton of books, I guess, um, would be a better way of putting it. But he's also uh, got some new releases, and uh, we'll see what else he's got cooking. So without any further ado, Sydney. Hey, Jeff. Hi. How nice to be here. Sydney or Sid, do you mind? Uh, either is fine. Uh, right. Sid, many people call me Sid, and so that is perfectly fine. All right. The one distinction I try to make is I spell it with an I. A lot of people spell it with a Y. And so oh. if you're looking for me, I'm, I'm spelled with an I. <laughs> yeah, I have to admit, when I was uh, uh, kind of cyber stalking you a little bit, I kept on uh, uh, switching the N and the D, and I kept on looking up Cindy's. Ah. Uh, it was, it was I, a little strange. It's like that's not him. Yeah. I would be called kids. Kids would misunderstand understand that in school, and I would get called Cindy a lot. Oh, uh, sometimes to tease me. Sometimes because the guy just didn't get it right. Uh, oh, there was a, a neighbor was, kid that always called me Cindy. <laughs> gonna say that sounds more like teasing than anything. But yeah, I, there was there was some of that. <sighs> Very cool. You have a new book out. I do. Uh, I can hold it up as we uh, speak. It is called Fool's Run, and okay. it is uh, uh, features a character named Cy Reardon. So it's it's got the subtitle, a Cy Reardon novel, and uh, first adventure for Cy, set in New Orleans, and uh, a little bit of a departure for me, although I had always been interested in in detective fiction, and so uh, oh. it takes me into that realm a bit, and was a lot of fun to uh, create and, and work on. Okay, so it's set in New Orleans. So does it have kind of a supernatural twist to it or anything like that? Or is it, is it a pure uh, detective thriller? There is a touch of the speculative in it. Uh, I guess it, it doesn't totally depart from anything I've ever done. Uh, there's a hint of, of magic tied to the villain. Uh, but it's not, uh, it's one of those where, you know, there, there may be a little bit of magic in play, but it is mainly a pure crime action thriller. Yeah. And uh, uh, in the, the next book with Cy, there'll be a, a little hint of that too. But it's uh, not uh, not a pervasive part of the story. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, uh, a lot of, lot of, as I said, a lot of fun to write, a lot of fun to, to uh work in the the new orleans realm and everything mm -hmm. i am from uh, louisiana originally if anybody's wondering where the accent's from <laughs> and uh so uh so kind of going home a bit working on that story i was just down in new orleans in march hmm. i have not been in a while uh because of, of covid of course but a great city used yeah. to get down there a lot well, i lived in central louisiana a long time uh, and so we used to go down and uh, hang out in the quarter on weekends and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. The quarter is a kick. Yeah, it really definitely, is. Definitely. Um, we, uh, the one place that, uh, I thought was really cool is the vampire cafe. Hmm. I don't know if you, it's, I, I have not been there. It is. It, it's, it's on the quarter, I guess. Um, you know, kind of towards the edge or whatever but uh, you know they have a vampire shop and then uh right in front of it, they have a vampire cafe kind of a it, it looks like a newer establishment but uh possibly so I, there used to be a voodoo shop off of uh jackson right off of jackson square as i recall it was kind of cool just small cramped and you know had yeah. a little, 
artifacts and everything. There are a lot of shops that weren't open at the time I was there, but you know, there's still a lot of stuff open. Of yeah. course, every bar seemed to be uh, doing pretty good. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh definitely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can imagine that. And there are some cool, cool bars and some cool dives uh, yep. <laughs> there. Um, and, uh, you know, it used to be, uh, you know, uh, hadn't been in a mall there in a while either, but it used to be like even voodoo uh, things at the mall, <laughs> you know, it'd be a little voodoo shop at the mall and things like that, or, or some of the little strip malls. And, yeah. You know. The thing that I thought was funny was, you know, you could go on the uh, ghost tours, vampire tours, you could do this, that, and the other thing. You could stand in a bar shoulder to shoulder. Didn't seem like the restaurants had a whole lot of social distancing going on, you know, go sit and listen to some jazz and eat some beignets and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, all, all uh, very New Orleans-y, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, cozy, comfortable, you know, just fun. But they had the cemeteries closed. <laughs> Due to COVID. But the bars are open. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think you could, uh, you know, socially distance pretty well in the, uh, in the, uh, 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 cemeteries. Just saying, I was trying to look for the logic of the uh, all-knowing government, and I couldn't find any there. But you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah, I'm guessing the cemeteries don't produce money, so screw it. We're just closing those things. Yeah, yeah. Not 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 a lot of lobby for the cemeteries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's probably a lobby group, but they're not well funded. <laughs> Oh, shoot. So you have quite a library of books. How many books do you have out there in total? I, uh, was, we were counting the other day for one thing or another, and I have decided to say, I, if the count is right, I have an unlucky number of, of books. I have uh, 13. 13? Uh, yeah. Uh, one is a, 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 a Crossroad Press did a short story collection called Scars and Candy uh, that is ebook only. So, okay. th but that puts it at 13. Uh, and uh, wrote uh, eight novels back in the day for uh, Kensington, uh, some under the Pinnacle logo for uh, adult readers and three young adults for uh, 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 the uh, 11, 12 and up crowd of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, those were written under the name Michael August to distinguish them from, uh, from things that were uh, targeted to adults anyway, sure. to it older readers sure so um typically you write you write kind of a dark fantasy horror type uh genre yes that's uh that was my uh it became my focus early in my my writing life i guess i would call it um i was a uh, uh, it was eclectic very early and then uh uh i guess later teen years i kind of discovered mystery fiction Mm -hmm. uh, there were actually, well, they took the comic, I've I, I told people this in interviews before, but they took the comic book rack out at the, uh, the local uh, drugstore where we shopped and it was, e that was easy to get to. Uh, and so that sent me to the magazine rack and I read um, the black and white horror magazines, which didn't, didn't really immediately realize they were influential, but I read uh, Vampirella and some of the Warren magazines, Creepy and Eerie. And Marvel, uh, when I was a kid, had some black and white magazines kind of trying to tap into that uh, yeah. market that Warren had kind of uh, cut a niche into or, or cut it, created a niche. So I read Vampire Tales and uh, I read a um, few, few others of their black and whites. There's one called Masters of Terror, which uh, uh, had stories from Theodore Sturgeon and H.P. Lovecraft, mm -hmm. Robert E. Howard, so cool stuff. So I read all that and I read, uh, discovered Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine and Alfred Hitchcock's Mystery Magazine and uh, got interested in detective stories and uh, became fascinated with uh, Raymond Chandler and uh, Ross MacDonald. And I uh, thought, hey, I'm going to write detective stories. And so as I was finishing college, uh, I actually managed to finish my first novel, a detective novel, a trunk novel, and uh, wound up writing three about a detective character. And I, I realized I don't have anything to uh, new to do with the uh, detective story. Uh, I'm not doing anything clearly that the, the grandmasters had not done. 
Uh, and then that, that, that memory of interest in horror and things kind of came back to me. And I, I liked Stephen King at that time and everything. And so I thought, well, if I blend mystery and horror, maybe I can do something that is more my own. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, kind of built on what I had learned about putting a story together from those trunk novels. And I, I set out writing the third person novel about a girl that uh, uh, was in touch with angels. And uh, I was a newspaper reporter by then, you know, I'd started finishing things late in college. My first job out of college was newspaper reporter. And so I, uh, my, my main character became a, a newspaper reporter and uh, the book Azarias came together and uh, I wrote it and a uh, longer book, you know, multi viewpoint and uh, kind of a little bit of that Stephen King influence kicking in and uh, sent it to a friend of mine. And I thought, well, I'm still learning. This is, you know, a trunk novel. And my friend read it and go, no, this is the one that you should go out with. You know, this is good. And so I started shopping that around and uh, it landed. And so um, became uh, kind of the, you know, my entry point. And I was writing short stories at that time too. And just kind of took a, a you know, a darker leaning from there. And, uh, and had fun with that. Uh, I saw Joe Lansdale comment that, uh, you know, he sees writers that suffer the pain and anguish, which is there, but he goes, you know, I'm, I, I, I like to write. And, and I think it's true. And, and, you know, that's, that's the big point, you know, is have fun with what you're doing. And so that was where, you know, I found some fun. And so kicked off you know, what I call my writing life uh, mm -hmm. anyway. And uh, has continued in one way, shape, or form to this day. So, how long how long have you been writing then? Ah, uh, that was uh, first book was published in uh, eighty eight or eighty nine. Okay. So, uh, so since then, uh, with a few fits and starts along okay. the way, and some forays into comics, and uh, I, I worked in newspapers for eleven years, and then I uh, worked at a library for a while. And uh, yeah. then I worked in uh, corporate marketing and I, uh, corporate marketing was kind of creatively uh, stifling to me. Yes. And so I didn't get as much, get as much done during that time, uh, but uh, left corporate marketing in 2012 and uh, have written several new books since then and, and quite a few short stories since then and really have got begun a new era. <laughs> the, uh, the thing about corporate marketing is it's boring. It is that. <laughs> I mean, you know, it anything is. that you come up with that's kind of fun or even maybe a little risky, they're like, no, 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 we can't do that. Our reputation, it's like, your reputation is not being known. This will get you known. And yeah. No, 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 no. I, I can't go to the, I can't go to the country club and be seen <laughs> with this type of advertisement. I'm sorry. This will stand out. Yeah. And it gets, it gets it not. I, I had a couple, a couple of things that we were able to to actually push the uh, envelope with. Now I am any, any time I watch like a, a Warner brothers movie, any of the studio movies where they take the logo and they, you know, they, they doctor it for whatever the movie is. So that yeah. you know, it has a mystical look, look for Harry Potter or a, uh, a Batman look for a Batman movie. Uh, Cause we couldn't touch the logo. You know, yeah. the logo was sacred. And uh, you know, of course the color scheme was, was sacred. Uh, but two two times we got to uh, branch out just a little bit. Uh, there used to be like uh, paid movie slides. I guess there still are, but there were movie slides before motion pictures, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the theatrical movies. And so we had the contract for one of the theaters in town and we got to do some fun stuff. Um, with that, uh, we did one um, to kind of highlight our cardiac program, I guess. We had a couple of guys, you know, in scrubs and, uh, and when Men in Black was out. So uh, in scrubs mm -hmm. with the hands ready and we called it Men in Scrubs. So we got to do that <laughs> one. And uh, we got to take the logo. The logo had a, a very uh, artsy element to it, but then, then it was the letters for the name. But uh, we, did, uh, we did that, uh, that uh, emblem uh, like a crop circle uh, and uh, did a parody on signs. Oh. Uh, and uh, then uh, we had, we did, uh, uh, our color was teal technically. And so uh, we did uh, one called Legally Teal with a very goofy looking nurse. Mm -hmm. And we got away with those. We got challenged on the um, 
the nurse one just because they thought it 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 sent somebody like some vice president in one shape or form thought it was uh you know disrespectful to the brand or something but, oh sure but yeah. but we got away with those the other thing that, that that we got into a little hot water with was uh we took and we we did it with stock photography and photoshop like creating the graphic artist took uh you know, uh, stock art of the same people. And we told mm -hmm. a little story for a, a, a division devoted to wound care. And uh, basically it was like uh, somebody with a, a foot wound. And uh, we took, you know, it was a, like a, it was a mailer, uh, you know, about, about uh, uh, a little bit bigger than five by seven with a little cartoon story on one side and uh, told the story of somebody that, uh, you know, had a foot problem and then uh, was treated and was able to dance again by the uh, end of it. So great little story in this great little scene of, of, of her and her dancing partner uh, in the last frame. And then on the backside, you know, if you have this problem, come to us. And so somebody on one board or another, uh, you know, got in a, a knot about it. And uh, uh, the, uh, head of marketing to his credit at the time said, well, did, did they get any new business from this? And I, you know, I called over to their department because you got, you get, got, you guys get new business from this. She said, yeah, we got two or three cases out of it, which is a ton yeah. in, you know, healthcare advertising. So said, okay, leave us alone. It, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that, when you're, when you're doing retail, it's kind of easy to, uh, you know, shouldn't say it's easy, but it's a little bit easier to track things because you can do coupon codes and redemptions and, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. Healthcare is nuts. It is, it is tough because, you know, it's not like you go into the doctor with a coupon, you know, you do not. And you do not, uh, you know, it, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to, uh, you know, sell somebody uh, an x-ray. So, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, I want to get my x-ray over or, you know, my MRI over there right. instead of uh, where it's, it's up to the doctor. So you, you do a lot of marketing to physicians and, uh, and things like that and do a lot of marketing uh, featuring physicians in, in one way or another to the, to the degree the law allows. Um, and, what I, uh, what work I think is funny it. is that doctors in general are very against advertising and, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, they want they want to be portrayed in a certain way, and you know, I I still think based on what I've seen that you know they should wear, and this is an old joke I guess, but it, it is true, you know, coats with uh, patches from all the drug companies that come in and give them paraphernalia, <laughs> and the equipment companies that actually come in and give them really great deals so they use their equipment, you know, and stuff like that, because they, they do sell their souls just a little bit. There's there th that is uh, you know I think ratcheted down a lot these days but you know there was a time when um, you know you would see the uh, pharmaceutical reps bringing lunch in for the staff right. and everything and uh, you know I have seen guys like uh, on the elevator because they were going to physician offices they have like a big tub of uh, of uh, uh, candy canes or whatever under their arm mm -hmm. oh, I know what you're up to <laughs> well they they tried to kill it with the sunshine act but they wrote it in such a way where the bigger companies can get around that very easily you know yeah some to, to some degree it's kind of like the comics code uh, a lot of them would kind of uh, create their own internal uh restrictions so that they you know were a not probably not going to trigger any new legislation and right. also just you know stay you know ethical or whatever up and up there's an old uh what is it larry sanders show they have a character go ethical don't pull at that thread our whole world will unravel <laughs> and that's that's true <clears throat> uh, but uh we did you do wind up doing as a, as a healthcare system you do a hospital system you do wind up doing some b2b and that was the other cool thing we almost did um it became a back burner property, but uh, we, the uh, wound center would do um, 
an annual big training session for physicians and, and, you know, all kind of aspects of wound care they could do education on with their doctors that were experts. And, uh, you know, we had a, 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 a building, separate building where we could hold healthcare training and public events and everything mm-hmm. and fill that up. Uh, and of course, you know, you invite doctors far and wide so that they would know the wound care center was there and they could refer wound cases there because it's stuff they don't want to, you know, stay hands on with. They, you know, send them over for hyperbaric oxygen treatment and all of that, that cool stuff, which is, is fun. We got to do posters for what you couldn't take into a hyperbaric oxygen chamber one time, <laughs> which is nothing, you know? Right. <laughs> but, um, um, we, uh, did a mailer to physicians or we, we, we did a trial run, you know, uh, mailer to physicians based on an operation game uh you know with the, the patient laid out sure. and everything but wound care oriented and uh the uh, head of the wound care center kibosh that she goes no the cartoon got us enough in enough trouble uh, <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna do that no. <laughs> so, so, so that you've got all this died. you've got all this marketing experience that you did you know in the corporate world and uh, for your books, do you just kind of unleash? And wh- what do you do for marketing and books? I try a little of everything. Uh, mm-hmm. Interviews like this, uh, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're sitting in it. Uh, no, okay. But uh, um, I, I try to be active on social media. And uh, I, um, I um, you know, do the usual thing. Some of it is just kind of reminding people you're there. And so, you know, I think Instagram is kind of, lifestyle pictures and things yeah. like that. Try to try to be active on Twitter uh, and uh, try to just um, uh, reach out here and there. Uh, I'm, uh, as always, always learning. And so trying to do new things on, on Facebook as we move forward and probably going to do some new things on Facebook uh, along the, in, in the near future. Uh, I've been doing some giveaways on Goodreads, which have been, uh, been fun. Um, I'm published by Crossroad Press, but, you know, some of the marketing is, you, you know, up to the author, uh, yeah. as, as always, as always has been. And uh, I've you know, met some new people, certainly some new readers by doing Goodreads giveaways. Um, Those have did, worked out well for you? Yeah, yeah. As far as, you know, meeting some new people, getting some reviews out there and uh, uh, got a really nice review, which I, I was um, remiss in discovering. Uh, but, um, I had one of the winners of one of the, the books, uh, one of the, one of the, uh, hard copy, uh, giveaways of full run fool's run wrote a really nice review and said, loved the characters. And she, she named favorite characters and things mm-hmm. like that. And just beautiful review on Goodreads. And it had been there a few weeks before I found it, but I, you know, was excited to like it and, and, and reply sure. back and, and, and make that, uh, contact. I'm going to do more with a uh, newsletter and, uh, uh, I, you said, you know, self shameless self-promotion wouldn't get vetoed. So, uh, speaking of using the name Sid, Sid is alive.com is my mm-hmm. uh, website and, uh, people can sign up for my newsletter there. And, uh, my plan is to, uh, do in the, some, sometime in the near future, do a, a, a novella, uh, featuring Cy Reardon for a newsletter subscriber. So there, there will be something free in the new, near future. Uh, and especially if people have met Cy and Fool's Run, uh, it will be a bridge between Fool's Run and Long Waltz, which is the next Cy uh, adventure. Sure. So um, how'd you come up with Sid is Alive? I read something about your friend sent you some uh, graffiti or something like that. Or... He did. I suspect, and I, th- I think Sid is Alive maybe was a thing that uh, uh, grew up in, grew out of Sid Vicious fandom. I'm, I'm not sure about oh. that. But uh, uh, it was, it was de- it, during a period that I was, uh, you know, adrift a bit, probably, probably during that era that uh, I was in corporate marketing. And um, or 2020. Yeah, yeah, one or the other, one or the other. It goes back a little further than 2020. It was. Uh, but uh, my friend, my good friend is a guy named Wayne Allen Salee, maybe most known for the uh, the novel, The Holy Terror and a host of, uh, of short stories. He was in uh, Year's Best Horror many years in a row. Uh, but anyway, guy from Chicago. And, but his roots are in Kentucky and had a lot of family in Kentucky. His father was actually a guy that moved from uh, 
uh, Kentucky to Chicago and became a Chicago police officer. So, oh. you know, um, true, you know, one of those true cases from a guy that left the country and, and really became, you know, a, a, a urban, uh, urban mm -hmm. fixture. But Wayne was in, um, I, where, in the South and, uh, touring uh, around and cruising around and he passed Waverly Hills Sanatorium, which is the, uh, uh, you know, one of the, an old uh, tuberculosis hospital and uh, one of the most haunted sites in the world. I think it is a haunted house now, but I think it was sitting empty at the time. And he saw a graffiti that said, Sid is alive. And uh, he took a snapshot of that and sent it to me. And I thought, well, what a great way to say that I'm still out there. And also, when your name is Sidney Williams, uh, there are a lot of uh, other Sidney Williams in the world, as there are a lot of uh, Tom Williams and every Williams. Mm -hmm. And so uh, SidneyWilliams.com uh, domain was already taken. And so I thought, what a great you know, thing. And so became Sid is Alive. Now, uh, again, I need to redo my will in the near future and cut a few people out of it and things like that. And also, I'm, I'm living in a new... <laughs> Uh, area now so you gotta do the usual you know uh update the living will for a new state and all that so uh, uh i i keep saying i'm gonna do it i'm gonna put a stipulation in the will that uh after i die it needs to become uh you know be con everything needs to be converted to the city is dead <laughs> domain do you own that domain I don't. I probably ought to get it. Yeah, I ought to get it. <laughs> yeah. Before this goes live, yeah, somebody before, else will. You know, somebody will. Somebody else squat will on that know. URL for you for yeah, your uh, estate. Yeah. Estate will have to yeah, expend some money to. Uh, to uh, uh, that twelve dollars a year will kill you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have any projects that you're uh, that you're currently uh, working on? I am working on. Um, Long Waltz, which I mentioned, which is a, a, a Cy Reardon uh, follow-up, uh, picks up where he uh, kind of leaves off at the end of uh, uh, Fool's Run and uh, takes him to Orlando. He, he, don't want to spoil anything, but uh, that's kind of a natural segue for, from uh, Fool's Run. And also, I lived in Orlando a number of years, and uh, he is uh, pulled into a, a, a case there, uh, a cold case. Uh, revolving around uh, the, the filming of a, a sequel to a movie that was filmed there years ago or in uh, on the coast near Orlando. I think it's ironic that you would have a cold case in or Orlando. I don't remember anything ever being cold in Orlando. Maybe the one day of winter a year. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's I, I loved Orlando, but uh, I live in uh, Virginia now because uh, my wife likes seasons, and yeah. uh, and there are you know there are not really seasons that much in uh, Orlando. Uh, no, and, hot and uh, sweaty, just yeah. sweaty, yeah, really humid, and that one cold day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I, I walk in the mornings. And so I, I can remember vividly walking on that cold day one year and listening to audio books. <laughs> wow, this is cold. But uh, 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 it's interesting. It, 70? <clears throat> uh, a little bit cooler than that. I would, I, um, 50, if, if it got below 50, that meant I needed a warm up jacket. You know, that, yeah. was, that was my decision. But anything above 50, you know, uh, the brisk pace would take care of the rest. <laughs> and uh, years uh, ago, I had a consultant that uh, or a, a, a software guy that came up to uh, work on some software. And he was from Orlando and he came up to uh, Wisconsin in February. And it's just <laughs> and we had to take him out so he could buy a coat. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I first moved there, yeah, my friend said, "Yeah, I think I wore a coat one day last year, or a jacket one day last year." Uh, and uh, I'm I'm in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia now, and uh, so we have seasons. We have beautiful uh, fall foliage, which uh, my wife really loves. And um, it is May, and uh, the high today is like sixty, so or sixty, uh, upper sixties, but. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, you know, much longer spring here, and uh, and that's nice. Um, yep. Winter can get chilly here, and uh, yep. 
or apartment, uh, apartment. I, I mentioned I'm, I'm in an apartment because uh, yeah, COVID froze the housing market and everything else. And so staying in an apartment longer than we like, and it's two story and it's uh, not well, the, the heating is not well, or the heating and AC are not well planned out. And so my first winter here, I'm going, my God, I am just not used to <laughs> cold weather i've been in orlando so long i can't uh, you know i can't take this then we bought a space heater we realized ah problem solved yeah but uh the living area was uh the coldest spot in the uh, house <laughs> and so realized uh ah there are there are ways to correct this and i became uh, fascinated with how how wonderful space heaters are now we found a great little contained one that you know is not the open flame that uh, some right. space heaters are i like the uh the, the uh light ones that uh, when you look at them you just see stars yeah you know, and they they radiate a ton of heat and they're hotter and you know if they tip over they're going to burn something you know those are yeah. those are awfully fun yeah, yeah. This is happily nice, nicely contained. And it, yeah, I said we're going to remember this. You know, this year we uh, we went to a uh, uh, Lowe's. I guess it was Lowe's we went to, but uh, and they, you know they brought it out and put it in our trunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a totally you know touchless experience. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but it was life changing. I realized I didn't mind uh, you know didn't mind the climate here quite as much. Mm. Uh, so kind of getting back to books what's the scariest character that you've ever written in your mind alex eva valentine alex eva the uh, bad guy in uh, fool's run is possibly uh possibly uh the nastiest and darkest character and he is not uh, got a touch of you know maybe magic in his history mm -hmm. but uh he is a guy that that maybe has you know some ties back to uh organized crime and things like that but he's he's on the cusp of being a legitimate businessman and yet he has all of the you know uh the way i want things to be goes mm -hmm. and uh certainly uh you know any wrong will be punished and uh Cy, uh, uh takes a really gritty assignment associated to him because Sai is a a cop who has done time and uh, nobody wants to hire him at a security firm or anything when he gets out of uh, gets out of uh, a prison, and so he uh, uh, you know has to take a job that involves surveilling this guy and everything you know, and he finds the terrible things he's done to people that have wronged him, uh, and so he, he may be one of the nastiest guys that I've ever. Uh, ever dealt with. Now I wrote, I don't have a copy to hold up handy, but uh, I wrote a novel called uh, Dark Hours. And uh, there is a, a pretty nasty little character in that too. And uh, he is masked for much of the story. It's one of those stories that takes place in one night. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is masked much of the time and he's kind of comical. He's kind of a ha 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 guy. <laughs> But uh, has all of these nasty little ideas, and uh, there is a, a reason that he is masked. And of course, you know, masks are just fascinating things anyway, and they carry mythic weight and everything else. But depends on what kind of mask you're talking about. I find them sort of boring nowadays. His his there is a re. I don't want to give it away, but there is a reason for his mask. Sure. And. Uh, so um, and, and and of course we get only glimpses of it and and you know understanding his mask is is part of the the mystery of the story, but also just the devilish little things he comes up with uh, in uh, in kind of tormenting my main character in that book, a uh, 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 student uh, journalist, uh, new media student or whatever, Allison Rose. Uh, he uh, he terrorizes her in that that storyline. The dark hours are the dark hours she spends trapped with him, and so he's he's a pretty he's a pretty you know nasty little creation too, and uh, amalgam of a couple of couple of elements, including uh, I went to I went to school with a nice little guy, it's not 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 big in stature. Uh, but he was a gymnast, became a gymnast, and uh, you know, it was very comical and would do things like, uh, you know, steal your cap and run away with it, and you right. know, use that kind of thing. And so, so he, he gave me some of the fuel for the character, but uh, you know, he, he, the character did not possess any of uh, his niceness. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so lots of lots of fun figures. Uh, Azarias himself from my first novel is a 
uh, interesting presence, uh, presents as an angel, but, uh, you know, is not uh, a good angel. <laughs> not a good angel. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, I did, uh, I did, I wanted to, to see if I could do it. I have a, maybe the, the, usually if I talk to people that, you know, were uh, buying books back in the day, so not always, but often a book called Nelfs, G-N-E-L-F-S. They are half gnomes, half elves, mm -hmm. and they're cartoon characters in the story. They're, they're, you know, a franchise, but then there's a darker element to them. And I wanted to see if I could do something with, with characters you would think were not necessarily threatening. And so I, I, I made these, uh, you know, they're, they're the embodiment of something else, you know, using the, the cartoon characters to, to lure children in uh, and be uh, dangerous. And uh, my heroine in that story has to protect her daughter from uh, a manifestation of these things. So they were, they were small and nasty as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and uh, uh, kind of dark little characters uh, too. And, uh, the, the cover art on that, the original cover art on that back in the day, uh, got right. some, uh, got, got some, uh, a lot of attention. Uh, the publisher was going for a certain thing with, with covers. Uh, so do you find that, uh, I mean, obviously you collaborate on the covers, but, uh, um, are you able to, with your publisher, you know, kind of portray your ideas and, and bring them to life or do they come to you and say, okay, pick one of these three. Uh, these days, a uh, bit more uh, collaboration. Uh, most of the covers for uh, Crossroad books are done by a guy named David Dodd. And David is, 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 is a phenomenal. And he did the, the cover we've looked at with, uh, uh, with uh, Fool's Run. And uh, he did uh, Dark Hours as well. And mm -hmm. uh, fun, fun stuff there. He... Uh, I did a novel that's part of an ongoing series from Crossroad, uh, the OCLT series, the uh, occult series, or uh, OCLT stands for, let's see if I can do this, Orphic Crisis Logistical Task Force, OCLT. And uh, they are uh, basically, you know, it's, it's kind of a fun series that uh, good guys against giant monsters. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, you know, when giant monsters appear, they are the team that are called. And uh, I did uh, uh, Disciples of the Serpent as a contribution to that series using uh, uh, a character named Jeffrey Bullfinch, who is a uh, character from the uh, OCLT Bible. And he is a folklorist and uh, is quite old. But uh, as David Wilson from Crossroad put it to me, think of him as a tough old guy. <laughs> so that's how you portray him. Uh, and so uh, I did him and uh, my, my character, Eileen O'Donnell, is from uh, the Irish Garda uh, Special Detective Unit. Uh, but she is roped into a Sub Rosa unit uh, and begins a, investigating a series of, uh, of uh, mysterious deaths of scholars in, uh, in Dublin and surrounding areas. And they're drawn into... Uh, uh, a race across Ireland to find a lost language in uh, historic land sites and all that. And um, they, uh, the cover for that, we're talking around, kicking around cover ideas and things like that. And um, David got a piece of art from uh, Bob Eggleton. And pretty much it was, you know, we're going to use this piece of art from Bob Eggleton on your cover because it's Bob Eggleton. <laughs> He draws giant, he does, you know, Godzilla and he does all this stuff. And so that became, became a great, uh, you know, great art element. And David took that, uh, David Dodd took that and worked with it and a uh, beautiful cover for uh, disciples. And uh, I just gave the last copies I had in hand away or I'd hold it up. But uh, uh, so that, you know, definitely collaborative there. Uh interesting story that just I just learned the other day it's one of those I was today days old I, I you know, about three weeks ago I guess I learned this but uh, I wrote a novel called Blood Hunter which was set in the Louisiana swamps back in the day 
And uh, I, that was not my original title. I can't remember now what my original title was, but uh, whatever it was, the publisher didn't like it. And so I think I, what happened is I submitted a list of uh, different titles and they picked Blood Hunter. And then I was talking to my New York editor at the time, wonderful, wonderful lady uh, who is also an author named Anne Lafarge, but pure New York, you know, upstate New York, New Yorker. And so I said, uh, she goes, well, what, uh, what would you like to portray? How about one of the monsters, uh, claws dragging across the page and making furrows in the page, you know, because, uh, you know, the blood hunter characters. And uh, she mm -hmm. goes, well, we, we just did a cover kind of like that. Uh, so I go, well, you know, a lot of it is set in a swamp. And, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm not from central Louisiana. I'm not literally looking out the window by me. I'm from Louisiana. I'm looking out the window at a swamp. She goes, and she's in Manhattan looking at, you know, <laughs> looking out her window at another building. She goes, what does a swamp look like? <laughs> and so, uh, well, it's got, you know, Spanish moss and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the art was, uh, you know, anyway, her notes became swamp and, uh, Basically, the cover became a, a, a much more lush swamp than I was thinking about. It looks maybe a little more like a South American swamp. Mm -hmm. But a uh, uh, young girl, and there's a bit of Spanish moss dangling down next to her, and she's parting some leaves and looking out. And, you know, that's the, the cover. But uh, I did not know until the other day that Ali Larder from Heroes was a, a model before she was an actress. And uh, I originally heard 13, but it was actually, she was 17. She was 17 years, she was a Ford model and all of these things. And she was the artist model that posed for the young girl looking through the leaves. And, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's on the, I remiss in not remembering the artist's name, but uh, it's on the artist website. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, he has, uh, you know, mentioned that if she looks familiar, it's because it's Ollie Larder. Hmm. So that's, that's kind of cool and little things you never knew till they pop up. That's cool. So covers are an adventure. I, uh, I was just looking at it and, and uh, um, I actually took my first swamp tour in March. I uh, hmm. went up to Slidell and uh, went around in a, uh, in a boat and we got to feed out, you know, uh, alligators and you know uh, it, it was just it was it was too much fun especially the uh, three-year-old that was just screaming every time she saw an animal oh my god look at that you know but uh it was uh you know i i find swamps very interesting and uh, i was happy to finally get to one but yeah i, I see what you mean it's not exactly a uh, swamp in louisiana yeah but. I think my iPad's going to die here. I was going to pull it up but and show it that way. But anyway, yeah. Google people can Google it and find the original Blood Hunter cover. Yep. Very cool. All right. So uh, anything else you want to tell your readers and fans as we uh, kind of close out the show? Um, well, it would be great if you can visit my website, sitisalive.com, and uh, sign up for my newsletter. Would love to uh, you know, have you do that and uh, be able to send you some free stuff and also tell you when I have new things out. Uh, I love to plug uh, uh, markets that support me or publications that support me. So I have stories in consecutive issues of Dark Dossier magazine. Um, and uh, that's issue 56 and 57. And kind of kind of traditional horror mystery stories, I guess uh, you might say. Uh, and uh, also, you can look for me in some uh, Camden Park uh, press anthologies, including Cat Ladies of the Apocalypse, which was a, a great story to write. Uh, I had I, I wrote a uh, I wrote a, an Edgar Allan Poe meets Florida Man story a couple of years ago, and it just the idea came to me out of a news account actually, and. Um, I, uh, I wrote that story and was looking around for a home for it and discovered uh, Camden Park had an anthology they were working on called uh, Quoth the Raven and uh, developed a relationship with them from there. And when they announced they were doing an anthology called Cat Ladies of the Apocalypse, I got to got to write a story for that. Uh, so uh, had fun with that story. And also I have a story. Uh, a gothic for the or that I wrote for them uh, in an anthology called Love Among the Thorns. So uh, 
if you can seek those out and support those publishers, always happy to do that. Happy to say, you know, please support uh, Crossroad Press. Crossroad Press has many, many authors represented now. And so, you know, uh, you can go buy something from Clive Barker from Crossroad Press. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're not interested in something of mine, support them by going, you know, go buy a book of blood or something. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'm in the usual corners of uh, uh, social media. You can find me on Twitter under my name. And I don't, you know, I don't have a cool Twitter handle or cool uh, Instagram handle because, you know, you need to find me. So uh, uh, just Sydney Williams. And, and uh, I'll, I'll and pick, have those links pick the, the one shows. that's me. What's yeah, that? Thank you. I say Google Sydney Williams and then pick the Sydney Williams that's me. Right. <laughs> versus all the Sydney Williams. I, I think if you just do Sid as Alive, you know, that that's to, memorable. That ought to do it. And there are links to the other places there. Very cool. Very cool. Well, um, thank you very much for your time today. Sure. Thank you for having me. A pleasure I do to do appreciate this. appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and again, if you guys uh, are interested in, in uh, Sid's work, go to SidIsAlive.com. Memorable website. And uh, if... Uh, um, there's anything else, uh, we'll put, uh, some links in there, the crossroads and, uh, Camden park publishers and, and stuff in the show notes. So cool. Cool. Um, we'll try and uh, give them a little bit of plug here or there Excellent. if we can, Excellent. but other than that, um, this is Jeff Bacon with the DIY writer podcast telling you, you know what, have a great get day, keep your chin up and things are going to get better. They already are. I hope y'all have a great day. Bye-bye. Please hit the subscribe button. I get a bonus for every subscriber and I only need 1,506 more to become a full-time paid employee. Help me please.